We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. We pray, Holy Father, that this moment you will come and be with us. We want to hear from you. May your word be released to us. May your spirit speak to our hearts. Lord, we don't want to live here the same way we came here. We want to live here as changed people. Come and perfect your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Today we want to talk about faith today. Faith today. I hope we know what faith means. Faith. We know what faith means, right? Yes. Some of us are even answering the name faith. We know what faith means. And why am I adding today, faith today? It is because today there are so many things that are fighting against our Christian faith. Things outside, things within us as individuals, then also things uh, within the church that are fighting against our faith today. So many things. If you look at the society we are living in, the society does not actually encourage our Christian faith. The society we are living in is the one that wants our faith to die. The society we are living in today is a society that is in opposition. It's like if you want to really live out your Christian faith 100%, it's like 1 billion people are going through towards this side, and you alone, you are going towards the opposite uh, direction. And when you see yourself moving towards the um, opposi opposing direction, uh, this question may come into your mind. Am I sure that this one billion people going to this side. Is it that these people are wrong? Or am I the one that is wrong? Am I sure that all these billions of people are making mistakes? Or I am the one that is actually making a mistake? But the Bible tells us that narrow is the way that leads to life. But broad is the way that leads to where? to destruction and many people are on it so our christian faith is something that we need to if we have found the truth we need to cherish it and we need to guide it very well we need to wash ourselves very well so that we don't fall by the wayside because many people are actually falling and the faith should be the faith that was handed over to us by Jesus Christ and by the apostles of Jesus Christ and not the faith that has been mixed with African tradition, not the faith that has been mixed with Western culture, but the pure belief in Jesus Christ alone. Let's look at our text. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 verse 8. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is a very big question. I started my reading from verse 6 so that we can understand what the full story is. Luke 18, 6 to 8 is what I just read. But where we are going to concern ourselves uh, with is 
the verse 8. Not just the whole verse 8, but the part B. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? This is a very, very big question. And Jesus, before he made this comment, he was talking about why we should pray all the time. And you know, prayer and faith work together. You cannot be praying without faith. And you cannot have faith without praying. If you have faith, the faith should move you to pray. And when you are praying, you should, first of all, believe that there is God. And that you want to pray to this God. Jesus Christ just told a parable of a woman who was meeting an unjust king, uh, an unjust judge, meeting him every day. Please handle my case. I need justice. I need justice. But this judge does not fear any human being. He has no fear of God. But finally, finally, he said, this woman is always disturbing me. Why not I just do something and allow this woman to go? If not for anything, self. But if not for anything, why not I even give this woman justice so that I can have my peace for myself? So finally, the judge decided to give this woman justice. And Jesus Christ now said, just hear this unjust judge. Look at what he said. He said, why not I give this woman justice? There are some of you here who believe that if you pray, God will not answer. So if this unjust judge, ruler, can give justice, how much more will God answer his children who are crying unto him day and night? Now let me tell you, speedily he will answer them. Are there people who are praying day and night in this house? I believe there are people who are praying day and night. Day and night. And you believe that the Lord God is alive. That God is not dead and he is going to answer you one day. No matter how long it takes, he will answer you one day. You believe. You believe. But there are some of us who easily give up. And we feel that maybe God is too busy and that uh, he does not actually concern himself with our uh, issues. Some of us also feel that uh, it is the nature of God to see his children cry for a long time before he hears them. But that is not true. Um, when we have a false opinion, a false belief about God, and in turn relate with God like that, it is a form of idolatry. Idolatry is when you create an image, an idol for yourself, and worship an idol. Some of us, what we are actually worshiping is not God Almighty, but an idol. We have decided to create a God with our imaginations. And some of us feel that uh, God is the God that wants his children to cry first before, we, before he can answer us. Some of us also feel that if we don't shout, God will never hear us. That is why sometimes when we pray, we somersault and cry and scream. Sometimes as if we are talking to a stubborn goat. That we need to, you know, a goat, a goat, goats are stubborn, eh? Goats, yeah, especially he goats, it's very, very stubborn. <laughs> it's not like the sheep. Some of us feel that before God can hear us, we need to scream and shout and repeat our words many, many times. But what did the Bible say? The Bible says that Jesus Christ said, when you want to pray in Matthew chapter 6, go into your closets. Shut your door and address him as our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. That means address him like a father. He said, don't repeat words as the hypocrites do, as the Pharisees do, because they believe that by their many, many repetitions, God will answer them. He said, you as a child of God, 
Don't pray like that. Address him as a father. Go into your room and shut your door and have a personal relationship with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. There are many things that are actually opposing our faith. And while Jesus was talking about praying to God all the time, that he, gave, he, make a, he made a parable today that men ought to pray. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. After the parable, Jesus Christ now said, Nevertheless, how be it? When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? This is a question that we need to answer today. Faith does not exist anywhere else except in the heart of the believer. Except in your heart. Except in my heart. Jesus Christ is asking a question. If he comes today, February 3, 2020, will he find faith in your heart? Will he find faith in my heart? That is a question. The topic of today's message is faith today. Today. Faith today. Do you have faith in your heart today? Many people have so many reasons for going to church. Some go to church because it is a part of their social culture. It's part of their social life to go to church. Uh, church today is actually interesting. <laughs> the Anglican church in those days, we are called CMS that it is a dead church. Isn't it? Yeah? Is Anglican church today a dead church? The church of Nigeria today is not a dead church because it is lively, the things we used to reject, like the power of the Holy Ghost. Today we have come to believe that the Holy Spirit works wonders. We have come to believe the work of the Holy Spirit. And because of some level of unfaithfulness too, we have brought in some little entertainment too, which is not supposed to be. You know, I will always tell you the truth. Eh? I will always tell you the truth. No matter how bitter it is, I will always tell you the truth. Jesus Christ is asking a question. When I come back, will I find faith in your heart? Faith does not exist in the market. Faith does not exist in your village. Faith does not exist in the church building. Faith exists in only one place. That is the human heart. And this type of faith does not exist in the heart of every human being, but only in the heart of a believer, only in the heart of a Christian. And today, Jesus is asking us, when he comes back, you know, he was not actually talking directly to the disciples. He was talking to the believers of the end time. That is you and I. That if I, when I'm going to return, the generation I am going to meet, will I find faith in their hearts? There are so many things that are making people to give up. It's not everybody you see in church that actually has faith. Some are in church because of entertainment. Some are in church because of their problems. And they want somebody to prophesy. Some don't want to go to a witch doctor. They want to go to church. Though they don't believe in God, they want to go to church so that somebody can tell them their problems. In fact, just this night, I went to bed around 2 o'clock. Uh, so I don't know if it was this morning or around um, yesterday but this night somebody sent me a message on my facebook page eagle eye opener and asked for the contact of a false prophet that i know 
And I told him, please, look for the contact, look for her to connect to Jesus Christ and not false prophets. He then replied me that, uh, is he a false prophet? I said, I replied him, I said, I'm not the one saying it, but the Bible says so. That this man is a false prophet. He said, which side of the Bible says so? So I sent him Matthew chapter 7. That Jesus Christ said, by their fruits, you shall know them. I said, the Bible, if you read, I said, read your Bible very well. You will see that this man does not bear the fruits of a true prophet. Do you need any prophet to tell you that this is Panaipo before you will know this is Panaipo? Do you know any, need any prophet to tell you that this is orange before you will know this is orange? You don't need any prophet. The Bible says by their fruits, you shall know them. What you need is a word of God. And do you know why I'm telling you this story? This guy told me that Jesus Christ is a scam. <laughs> That means Jesus is a 419. So I replied to him. I said, uh, please repent and give your life to Jesus Christ. He does not believe in Jesus Christ. But he believes in the prophets of Jesus. Prophets in quotes. I replied to him, I said, no wonder you are looking for the contact of a false prophet. You see, some of these people, they go to church, but they don't have faith in Jesus Christ. They don't have faith. There is this video of a girl who went to church. Uh, maybe, maybe one or two of you may have seen the video of a girl with eyelash, went to church. My short girl, my short lady. So she was doing a video for her boyfriend in church. And how do I know it was her boyfriend she was doing the video for? You could see the expression on her face, the smile, the way she was doing. It's a selfie. She was doing a video for her boyfriend. And after uh, they were praying, they were blessing the offering to give offering in church. And after doing the... Uh, when it was time to dance and give the offering, she now dropped the video on the seat. While she was dancing, she was shaking her bum bum. And in church, in church. Oluwa, etobi. That was the song they were singing. Etobi, oh, etobi. She was dancing and she was shaking her backyard for the guy. The pastor will be thinking. She is dancing for Jesus. But there is a phone recording her bum bum for a guy. And you think you have a member? Is that person a church member? That is a church goer. She is not a member at all. After they finish the dance, she now picked it and switched it off. Don't we have people like that in church? Eh? When we go to all nights, Move round. Eh? You will see people like that. All these things are opposing our Christian faith. Some of our children on Sundays, we force them to go to church. Some of them don't want to go to church, but when it is all night, they will be the one to remind you every time. Mommy, remember that all night I will be there. I have some prayer points. That day, it is me and God. When some of these people go there, they don't enter the church. I slapped one young boy and a girl. During the night, I saw the young man, young boy, carried a small girl on his lap. And they were playing willy willy play. In a church compound. So when I saw that, they were sitting with their friends and... Hey, I said, so you are doing this thing outside. You now bring it to the holy land of God today. All the adjournments they had, I slapped the adjournments from their bodies. And he said, eh, eh, I 
will deal with you. I will call security for you. I said, go and call the security. So he called the security. In the house of God, in the church compound. But do you know that some of these young ones coming up, they don't see anything wrong with it. They think that God is merciful and you can do this thing and nothing happens to your faith. There are people that believe that once you have confessed Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you can go on and live your life the way you want. And it doesn't mean anything. May the Lord deliver us today. I say, may the Lord deliver us today. Amen. If for this life, only that we have hope, we are most, we are men most miserable of all men. But we have hope. And that hope is part of our faith. That we serve a living God. And that no matter what we face, God Almighty is going to see us through. And that life does not end in this world alone. There are some things that are opposing our faith. The Bible says that now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. We have the hope. The first faith we have is that God exists. And that God is a God we don't see. We Africans, our forefathers, we are serving gods that they see. They know that uh, ancestral powers exist. They believe in demons. They believe in different kind of things. But they also have the representatives of these demons, these devils, in form of carved images. And when they have a, a, an, a, a deity, maybe in the water world, uh, in, the, in the lake or river or ocean, they also have an image of that deity that they serve at home. I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain. But we Christians, God said we should not use any image to represent him. Nothing at all. Nothing should represent him. Read the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. Me alone. You shall not carve for yourself. You shall not make for yourself any graven image. Anywhere you see any graven image. Whether it is of Jesus, of Mary, of Joseph, and people bow down to it, it is idolatry. It doesn't matter who does it. Let the person be Pope. Let the person be anything, Archbishop. It is a sin. And all idol worshippers will go to hellfire. That is the truth. I have to tell you the plain truth. God said, don't make for yourself any graven image at all. None. But people say, you can make for yourself so long as it is the image of Mary. Image of Jesus. <laughs> don't be deceived though. Don't be deceived. We serve a God we don't see. And that God says, don't use any image to represent me. Don't make any graven image for yourself. Even the image of, in the likeness of anything above in heaven. Not in the likeness of anything on earth. Not in the likeness of anything under the earth. Don't make for yourself. Some of us, we don't bow down to these things. But the religious things we put in our bodies. Eh? The way we see them, we see them like God. Some of us here. The day we forget our divine encounter water, I mean the water they bless for us, all the anointing oil they bless for us, 
The day we forget it at home, it's like we have forgotten our God at home. When it has come to that point, it is idolatry. Is somebody following me? God will never share his glory with anybody. He will never share. The faith you're supposed to have in God, he will never share it with anything. The Bible does not condemn blessing water. The Bible does not, even Paul, they were praying over handkerchiefs. But these things are not meant to be worshipped. Is somebody following me? Africans want to see something they can see physically. Some of us, we so much believe in our Bibles that we can use it as a pillow, but we never open it to read it any day. We believe that there is power in it. When witches uh, press some people, when they face demonic oppression, they always use their Bibles as pillows. Sometimes they open it, put it in their chest. When I was sick some time ago, I used to open Bible, put the Bible on my chest. It's not bad anyway. It is your faith. But when you see the Bible as your healer, instead of God, it's a sin. Is somebody following me? Number one, we serve a God we do not see. And this is a problem to some Christians. Imagine somebody having 100 angels following him. But you don't see them. Look at Elijah and the servant of Elijah. When the enemies came, soldiers surrounded them. And he said, open the eyes of this my servant. God opened his eyes. And when he saw the angels of God, armies of God, his heart was straightened. We walk by faith and not by sight. By faith, not by sight. I want every one of us to believe God in totality. There are many things that are working against our faith. Let's touch the second one. Religious deception. Today there is confusion all over the world. Confusion everywhere. Confusion everywhere. So many denominations, even in Christianity, the confusion is so much that so many things are happening and people are claiming that these things are actually part of our Christian practices. Somebody who calls himself a prophet taking another person's wife to go and give the person a spiritual bait. And from that bait can put a baby there in the person's womb and you are still calling yourself a man of God another person's wife a lot of confusion in Christianity and when we see these things the Bible says that because Matthew 24 12 and because iniquity shall abound the love of many the faith of many their love for God their love for their fellow human being will was cold and Jesus is asking when I come again am I going to meet faith on earth are you facing any challenge now are you facing any problem hardship Tomorrow we are going to continue from here. Are you facing any challenge that people are asking you? Are you sure you are a child of God? People may be asking you, are you sure it is because of your sins? They ask Job the same question. 
But I want to tell you, let nothing touch your faith. Even if problems will eat up your flesh, let the problems not eat up your faith. Tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor. Say neighbor. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your faith with all watchfulness. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at hosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.